Hey everybody, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy where the proof is in the singing. I got a lot of requests for this one and the request was, Ken, can you please do a video on Eric Gronwall, who's the new lead vocalist for Skid Row? And I thought, sure. Now in the past, I'd done a whole series on uh, replacement singers, but I couldn't really do that here because there was six replacement singers or six singers in Skid Row, maybe more, but I know there was uh, Matt Fallon, Sebastian Bach, who brought them to fame or helped get them to fame. Uh, there was Johnny Sullinger, Tony Harnell, ZB Third, and of course, Eric Gronwall. So, um, but I wanna focus on Eric because that was the request. And I'm gonna juxtapose Eric uh, to Sebastian Bach because I believe that Sebastian's the one that brought them to fame, right? And he's the, the go-to guy, the guy to beat, so to speak. Now, um, before we get started, I wanna lay out some ground rules and some criteria. It's one thing to come along and imitate somebody and especially when that imitator is in their prime and the person they're imitating is older, maybe in their 50s or even 60s or in some case 70s, right? So that's not a fair um, contrast between the two. So I chose to go back and get older footage uh, of Skid Row with Sebastian Bach and I'm gonna juxtapose that to newer footage of Eric. I think that's the only fair thing to do. I even ran it through some AI so that the film was a little cleaner because a lot of stuff is real grungy. Now the audio, I'm gonna be clear about this the audio on some of the older footage stuff believe it or not from skid row a couple of a couple of japanese clips especially had better audio uh, than the newer stuff with eric because mostly it's like cell phone stuff so i wanted to be really sensitive just to pick the creme de la creme now I'm not gonna go through all of their stuff. I just picked a couple of tunes. I Remember You, you know, a couple of the bigger hits, right? The harder songs to sing. So I think I took out three. Now how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start out by doing a line of Sebastian and I didn't just take one show, I took two or three shows because it's not fair to just base everything on one show. So I took two or three shows of Sebastian, a couple lines, and then the same song, a couple, three shows of Eric. So we could just contrast them as we go through and take a serious look at this. Now, I have my own opinions on what I think and I'm gonna express them later, but I don't wanna, um, I don't wanna influence your opinions because I want you guys to post you know, in the comments sections how you feel about this. Now. One of the things I will say about Eric is he's bringing a whole new, fresh energy to the band, which is awesome. I love his attitude, his work ethic. It's, I'm super stoked that he overcame cancer, uh, and he just sounds like an all-around really cool guy. So, uh, But I also have to be really honest about this because it makes no sense to you know, praise this and praise that and praise this. I gotta just be straightforward as a vocalist myself. Now, we've done a lot of Skid Row songs. I'm gonna put those songs in the description so you can see how my students did with Skid Row stuff. So I'm not just some talking head guy, you know, who really shouldn't, <laughs> shouldn't be making any comments about that if they can't do it themselves and they show no students doing it. And, you know, maybe there are some guys that, should, that have the ability to narrate like that or, or make uh, uh, judgment calls on this. But so I want to go through right now and I'm just going to start right out of the gate with Sebastian. Here we go. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Next clip. Okay, cool. Now, um, pretty consistent, right? I mean, you know, Eric is doing an awesome job just covering and nailing uh, Sebastian's parts, and there's nothing really there to kind of write home about him. It's just good stuff. Um, now, I'm gonna be really 
uh, careful but blunt about the way I say some things. Um, for me, as a singer, Sebastian has always been very pitchy and meaning out of pitch, like just kind of a donkey on the edge in his pitch. However, when a person does, or a singer does superhuman feats and they're t they take a lot of chances, um, it's pretty easy to, you know, get off balance here and there because you're trying things that no man has ever gone before, right? So we have to take all of this into consideration and we've seen Sebastian do this. So when someone does, if someone sets a new football record or a new running score, a new swimming score, you know, it's one thing for other people to go, oh wow, someone already did that so I, I can see my path to doing that and then they come alongside and do it and maybe do it better or, or exceed a world record. But for the person that's pioneering it, it's all new territory. They're pioneering something brand new. So because of that, not only do I forgive him for his pitchiness, but in some ways it's kind of exciting because he takes a lot of chances, okay? So I've got to be like super clear about this I was going through and I want to hear your opinion. But so here's the next clip of, of Sebastian. Here we go. And I know I'm giving long clips, but I think we really need that so I don't uh, pull things out of context and then we can really see the flow of, of each one of these performances. They're all really consistent. And if anything, at least up to now, uh, in my personal opinion, I think Eric's pitch is a little better. One of the things I'm starting to notice, and I'm gonna put this out here right up front, put this out there right up front, and that is that probably because the instrumentalist players are older, 
um, there's a kind of clubbiness feel to me in Eric's situation. Now, is it coming from Eric? Is it coming from the band? It's kind of a combination of both because Eric plays off the rhythm section, the rhythm section plays off the vocalist. Um, whereas the energy that I'm getting in Sebastian's stuff is, is considerably higher, okay? So we're gonna look out for that as we're going along, just to not just look out just only vocal performances. Now, it seemed to me that some of the way that Eric treated the vocals was maybe even easier than some of the way that um, Sebastian treated his vocals. Now, again, Sebastian could have been on tour, you know, we see these different shows, a couple are in, in Japan, we got the one in London. Was it, you know, how many, what, how many hours of sleep did he have? How many shows did they do back to back? There's so many variables in this, guys. So I did really treat, truly try to take the creme de la creme. I even tried to fix the audio of Eric's performances because it was so trashy. I compressed it and I did some EQ and, you know, I did some, some things to really try to make everybody have the, the best shot at this. Now, I'm gonna mention one more thing. As we're going through this, there's a couple things I want you to notice. Sebastian's stage persona, uh, Eric is trying to mimic, even down to when he lets the audience sing and so forth. So if he's gonna do that, he better do it and then some, or come up with his own things if he's looking to take the band up another notch. Now, if Eric is looking to do his own thing completely, and you've kind of seen that with some of the newer recordings, it brings a whole new freshness to the band, which is really cool. Okay, I'm gonna shut up now, but I have to make these episode. But let's watch for the energy factor and some of the other elements here of really pushing the limits of live performance. Here we go. You say I love you, baby. Yes, I edited out the solo. clips play through because I want to see the ebb of flow of this continuity
I'm gonna quickly stop it because I have to point something out I don't wanna miss. The passion, you know, Sebastian is all in. He's 110%. So when you hear him go a little off pitch here and there, because he's leaving it all on the field, okay? So it's really important to, to, to make sure that we understand the, the passion of the performance, the energy of the performance, the really just putting it all out there kind of vibe that he's giving and see how well this fares with any of the other um, the singers that you know participated with Skid Row. So here we go. play again for a second but I, I have to um, give some kudos to Eric on some of the way he handles stuff so he's stepping in to fill in some extremely difficult shoes other men have come in and tried and failed uh, or not failed I'm sorry uh, only lasted so long I should say I shouldn't say failed uh, and he has his own swag to him he doesn't have the same animal kind of vibe he's got a really laid-back sweet vibe in a cool way and I don't mean that to feminize it I'm just saying that's what it is and um, so his approach is more gentle you know to it but he, he has he has energy and everything else but it's just he has a different approach so we got to kind of let people's personality shine uh, for what they do so I wanted to uh, contribute that to my comments as I went along here but
So he's the real personable, likable guy, which is really cool. Um, so he's in the audience, he's really connecting with the audience in a very intimate, personal way. Sebastian did that in his own way. You know, I, I remember seeing some of the earlier shows, especially Budokan and Kawasaki. Um, I remember doing this myself when I toured a lot, where you'd remember, you know, obviously what city you're in. Because, man, sometimes you might laugh at somebody that yells out a city that they're, you know, performing in. It's not the city. You know what I mean? You've seen that before. Well, you're doing a lot of different time zones, traveling at least 400 miles a day by bus or on an airplane somewhere in, in a different time zone usually. And so sometimes it can be tough to remember. So I remember what I did is I'd try to, you know, if it was in Japan, like what uh, what Sebastian had done, you'll see him, you know, reading things that are in, in Japanese. And it's really cool. Now, I'm sure Eric will probably get to that um, as they tour. And I remember even thinking about, you know, the political situation in each country and maybe talking about a little bit or something big that was going on if a movie star died or, you know, just whatever, some lament or some something that was important to a country. And so Sebastian was personable in his own way, more like personable to the masses. And Eric's kind of a little more on the one-on-one -on -one level of just being like a really cool, sweet guy. Um, so anyway, um, and again, I'm not trying to, you know, uh, minimize any macho-ness that he has. I just mean it's just his nature. He's, he's a cool, kind, a kind soul, so to speak, from what I could tell. So. Now, I'm going to say it, and I'm sorry, and I think Eric is cool. He kind of reminds me a little bit of Eric Martin, some of the way he, he sings certain things. Um, the energy level is nowhere as near like it was in the early Sebastian Bach era. Not even close. Like I said, it's kind of club and then some uh, band. Now, are they club band? No. Am I calling them out being a club band? No. But I'm just saying that the energy level is kind of at that level. Now, the audience has a role, plays a role in that. Again, the age of the instrumentalists play a role in that, how much, how aggressive they want to be. And maybe they'd look stupid if they went around running around like in their 20s. That's possible too. But I am bringing up the fact that the energy level is nowhere near as intense as the early Sebastian Bach years. It's true. but he's singing great. Now he's obviously going for more of the notes on the record than even Sebastian did. Sebastian did try to do some, and Eric's actually rise into the uh, into the level of the record, maybe more, in some cases more than Sebastian did. Though Sebastian took more chances, and Sebastian's passion was just a little more, you know, intense and all in. Um, so that takes away sometimes from the ability to get to certain things because you've spent your energy on other things. So. <laughs> Best audio I could get, guys, sorry. Great singing.
Great job, Eric. Okay, now uh, I wish we got a good recording of this because whoever that sound man is, you could tell he's a great sound man. You can hear all the drums crystal clear. The cymbals are nice and up front. It's just booming, slamming big drums. The guitars are great. The vocals place well. He traced off some echoes here and there when, when he needed to. It's a shame we don't have like even a board recording of this mixed with some of the live room stuff because that sound man's great. I'm not even sure who he is, but he does a good job. I hope they keep him. Um, anyway, let's move on. Here we go. Just really good energy. I mean, just good passion in, in the in this stuff. This is more of a laid back song, kind of dark and melancholy. And at the same time, you know, he builds energy and brings it back. It's not like this kind of one dimensional guys out there just still doing the same song for 30 years feeling, you know what I mean? Um, it's different, it's fresh and different here, you know? Young, young energy.
Okay, I went ahead and do, did two versions because I only had one version of um, Sebastian, so I'm gonna play part of the second version from Eric. I think Eric beat him. I think Eric beat him vocally. I think he was in better pitch, he had better notes, he had a little better energy even in this, this case. Really makes me wonder, because Eric's kind of bringing this whole new fresh thing to the band, other than kind of the drummer. The drummer's throwing down, he's really, the drummer's all in. Um, you know, the band's playing all the parts, but they're playing it like old guys, you know, and he did, I, I wonder if, if Eric doesn't really get I don't use the word permission, but for lack of a better term, permission to kind of have and bring to the table the same energy that, that um, Sebastian did, given a bunch of players that were all in with a lot of crazy energy. I bet he'd rise to that. I, so, so I don't know that it's fair to say and blame it on him as a singer, that's not fair. But the collectively as the band, um, it's not delivering the same energy, but he's definitely trying to deliver all the same vocal energy and then some. So I think he beat him on that last one. I'm not gonna play this whole clip, but I just wanna show you his consistency, uh, that he's consistent night after night, which is cool. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit here, hold on. Let's go to here. Almost had some Graham Bonnet. Okay, we're gonna come up to the end. I'm, on, I'm just gonna do a small snippet of the chorus of Youth Gone Wild for both both um, eras, so to speak. Now, Sebastian is Sebastian, and Sebastian does Sebastian extraordinarily well. And Eric is stepping into you know the um, the sandals, so to speak, or the foot the footprints of um, of Sebastian. Eric strikes me as the kind of singer that could kind of step into almost anything. He could step into Deep Purple, he could step into Rainbow, probably step into Black Sabbath. He could step into a lot of other bands, maybe even Guns N' Roses and other bands, whereas that wouldn't be Sebastian's thing. You know what I mean? Sebastian does Sebastian. So Eric is a bit more versatile. You hear a little more soul and blues and you can, his influences are, are more rounded, maybe in earlier classic rock in a different kind of way. So there is a component that Eric absolutely brings that is, um, uh, you know, more diverse, I'd say, in some ways. I said, sometimes he reminds me of Eric Martin, sometimes Graham Bonnet, sometimes, you know, some of the great rainbow singers, you know, he's got going, going on, which is really cool. And that wasn't Sebastian's thing. Sebastian was about range and about energy and holding really long notes and just, you know, intensity, um, which he's trying to bring to the table too, but he's got his own thing. So let's, let's continue. Here we go. We'll close this out and then move into You've Gone Wild. The youth! See the intensity and the energy of this? Clubby. 
Eric's giving it all he's got, but the total energy is clubby, comparatively. Okay, guys, I got to do this just because, you know, people asked me for that. So I've got to be fair about this, okay? I'm going to go back to Youth Gone Wild at the beginning. Let's see if I can find it here easy. Um, I think it's right about here. Um, there's no comparison, I don't think. One is Rockstar and Arena Rock, and the other one is really good club, almost Arena Rock, at least in this part of these sections. So let's just check this again. It's uh, just before this, hold on. Here we go, it's right after this. Okay, we're gonna go to the end of this. That's what it makes me feel like. Okay, so again, I'm just trying to be really fair about this. I'm not looking to diss anybody. I'm trying to give respect to everybody. I've got to call a spade a spade. I've got to praise things where I see it. You guys tell me what you think. This was kind of a longer video. I spent a lot of time on this for you guys putting this together because I feel like I deserved that. Um, I tried to shut up so we could just really let this uh, play out so we could really take a look at, you know, how... Um, how we could contrast the two together and, and see what's real and what isn't and what's what we remember something to be great or you know whatever anyway please put your thoughts and comments in the description let me know again eric i mean no disrespect for you if you watch this video i think you're super awesome i think you could step into almost any band and pull it off um sebastian obviously you ruled planet earth for a very long time and you had the whole world singing your songs uh your and your band songs and you set a bar so high uh that almost no one has been able to come up to that level um, uh, or maybe haven't, you know, I don't know. But anyway, so you guys tell me what you think. Again, we've done versions of Skid Row songs. I'm gonna put those in the in the description. Click on and see how we did. Uh, good job to everybody, but again, this is a tough, tough shoe to fill. And uh, definitely stick around for my next video. Yes.